you out. It's the God who's over you that knows these things. And so thus concludes the parable, except for this last sort of enigmatic statement when Jesus says, for many are called, but few are chosen. The Lord continues here his condemnation of ethnic Israel for their rejection of the promised Messiah. I honest, honestly believe that's what it means. The many called are old covenant Israelites living in Israel in the first century, though, those to whom the Messiah had come and they received him not. The statement does not mean that only a few people will be saved, for many are called but few are chosen. I, think that Revelation 7 betrays that. There's a great multitude that no man can number from every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. The statement should not be used as the battle cry for hyper-Calvinism. Well, you know, the Bible says many are called, but, but few are chosen. If you're a hyper-Calvinist, can I encourage you not to hinge on this particular text? I would suggest that the statement does not contradict other passages of Scripture in Matthew's Gospel. Look at Matthew 8, specifically at verse 11. Matthew chapter 8, beginning in verse 10. Jesus heals that centurion's servant, and in verse 10, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. What do you think he's talking about? Again, Gentiles, tribe, tongue, people, and nation. He came to his own, his own received him not. And then verse 12, but the, uh, uh, the sons of the kingdom, old covenant Israel, will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. As well, look at chapter uh, 26. We're going to read that in a few moments when we transition into the supper. Matthew 26, specifically at verse 28. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So whatever Jesus means in Matthew 22, 14, for many are called, but few are chosen, he can't mean contradiction. He can't say many aren't saved and many are saved. That's simply contradictory and it doesn't work. But even in our text, look in Matthew 22 again. Look specifically at verse 10, the latter part. And the wedding hall was what? It was filled with guests. But then in verse 11, he saw a man. Seems like it should be just the inverse if Matthew 22, 14 is what the hypers tell us it is. It should be just the opposite. There should only be a handful in, in that wedding hall. There should only be a few. As well, as I think is correct by Warfield, the statement is intended to make an ethical impression, not a prophetic declaration. In other words, Jesus is condemning these men. He's con uh, confronting them. He is dealing with them in absolute honesty about the state of their never dying souls. He's not making a prophetic declaration as to how many people are going to be in the kingdom of heaven. And I would suggest ultimately the statement refers to the fir first group of inv invitees at the time of Christ. Many were called, few were chosen to the Jew first and also to the Greek. We cannot deny the apostles and their, their heritage. We cannot deny the reality that they would go and preach in Jewish synagogues and some would be saved. But for the most part, few were chosen. They were re uh, uh, rejected by God most high. And I would suggest that the statement also provides warning for us today. Many are called by the proclamation of the gospel. Many are called in terms of a general call or an external call of the gospel. Don't just assume that you've heard, because you've heard the gospel, that you're necessarily going to heaven. Response to that gospel is to believe. That response to the gospel isn't out, going out, uh, go out and do better, go out and try harder. It's to lay hold of the Lord Jesus Christ. As our confession says, metaphorically, it is to receive him and it is to rest.